All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. This is Joe Minardi coming live from my uh, WVU Emergency Department recording studio, and I got a little bit of info for you today on ultrasound of skin and soft tissue infections. So sometimes I like to start off with a case, and that's what I'm going to do in this case. So here's a case. You've probably seen similar ones in the past. So we got a two-month-old female. She comes in with a red swollen area to her left buttocks. Her parents are concerned. She seems to be painful, and she's had a little bit of fever. Um, but, you know, her vital signs, her heart rate's okay, respiratory rate's okay. She's got a little bit of a fever, 38.3. But she looks well. She's not toxic appearing. And right on that left buttocks area, she's got a little tender red lesion. Uh, it feels indurated, but you don't really feel any fluctuations. It's not draining or anything, so you're left with kind of figuring out what should you do with this. So there's, you know, a lot of different options and a lot of different things you got to think about. <clears throat> Should you just start this patient on some empiric antibiotics and, you know, see how they do? You know, do this for a couple days, come back, or should we start antibiotics and admit you? Should we try to stick a needle in here and aspirate to see if there's any pus in there first before we decide? Do we need to go ahead and IND this thing? And then, you know, this is a two-month-old. When we IND it, do we need to just do brutane or sedation? And if you're at a small clinic or an urgent care, that might mean do you need to transfer this patient because you don't have capabilities to do sedation. So there's a lot of things, even with this small problem, that you've got to figure out. And you might be guessing on some of that stuff. And that leads us into a little bit of talking about using ultrasound to help you with these soft tissue and skin infections. So some of the literature would suggest that we're not... Uh, as good as we would like to be with just physical exam at deciding whether there's an abscess or not. And if anybody out there has ever cut into an infection and then nothing came out, you know that that's true. And I'll raise my hand because I've been there. Um, but with ultrasound, we can decrease that rate of a non-therapeutic IND. Actually, since I've started using ultrasound, I've never done um, a non-therapeutic IND. Every time I cut I get pus out now, which is nice. Um, and once in a while, studies have shown uh, you might find an alternate diagnosis. It might just be a big swollen lymph node or a thrombophlebitis or even maybe a hernia, depending on the location. And this is, this is low-hanging fruit as far as ultrasound goes. This is quick. It's super easy. And then when you do this, you can do a lot less guesswork, you make better decisions, and this is an area, even though this probably doesn't save a lot of lives, it's not a super sexy topic, this is a place where you can really make a big difference in what you do for patients and really change your uh, decisions and make uh, patient care better. So the indication is easy. I anytime you see a soft tissue infection and you have any thought, any possibility in your mind at all that there might be an abscess, uh, go ahead and ultrasound it, especially if you think you might need to do an IND. Ultrasound it first, because sometimes you'll you'll change your mind. And most of the time, what we're going to use is a linear high frequency probe. Most of these things, again, we're talking about skin infections, so they're in the skin, they're superficial. We don't need a lot of depth or penetration, but we like the uh, high detail resolution. Now there are some scenarios like peritonsillar abscesses or some other really kind of deep perianal abscesses where you might use other transducers, but most of the time what we're talking about, we're going to use linear high-frequency transducers. And patient position, this is pretty easy, just wherever they're comfortable and wherever you can kind of get the probe to the area that's infected, and that's going to be different depending on the location. So it's important to remember what normal tissue looks like and differentiate this from abnormal, and I'm going to kind of show you some examples and what I recommend when you look at these infections is you start with your probe on an area that appears normal, scan all the way through the abnormal section and then get back to normal tissue again and so you can see the real differences and the real borders of the problem area. But just remember the normal dermal layer it's really pretty thin and barely visible on ultrasound if it's normal. It, you don't see much of it. It's really thin. Then you've got some sub-Q in here. You've got some fascial planes and some muscle. And so that's what normal tissue looks like, all these well-defined planes of different tissues. Now in contrast, here's cellulitis. Now we don't really see good borders between dermis and sub-Q. We've got this kind of thickened, brighter area. This is, this is cellulitis. We see some muscle down here. 
and this is what you might see in a soft tissue infection. Now there's no abscess here, there's nothing to drain here, but this is um, what you might see with cellulitis. And some other findings of cellulitis, you might see cobblestoning. Again, look at the dermis, it's thick, it's more bright white. Uh, the tissue margins are more blurred. Here's a little um, kind of less specific, but again, blurred tissue margins, bright uh, dermis, not as much cobblestoning, but this is, these are all examples of cellulitis. Uh, important to know that edema looks a lot like this as well, so you have to have the whole clinical picture, history and physical, uh, definitely important in determining what's going on with these patients. And there we've kind of you know, highlighted a little area of cellulitis with cobblestone, and cobblestone is a good finding to look for. And then with an abscess, what you might see are some of these things, and these are what I would consider kind of prototype abscesses. They're very, um, you know, you have well circumscribed fluid collection. Remember, fluid usually appears more black on ultrasound. You've got posterior acoustic enhancement where everything behind looks a little bit brighter white. So again, here we see this fluid collection. There's a little bit of echoes in here, probably from some, you know, dead white blood cells and protein, and then more bright white behind this posterior acoustic enhancement. Here's another one. Again, this is what I would consider an abscess prototype, bright white behind black fluid collection. Uh, but they don't always look the kind of stereotypical manner. So here's one that's kind of more layered and lays out along this tissue plane. We do see the changes of cellulitis with cobblestoning, thickened, bright white um, dermal layer. Here's another one where it's very irregular and layered out. You can kind of outline here, and we got this thickened again dermal layer. So these are some abscesses that aren't quite prototypes, but these are still abscesses that probably need to be drained nonetheless. And I try to put some little outlines on there for you to highlight those. Uh, but it's important to know that sometimes abscesses look like this, so you don't miss them because they're not these perfect round black structures. And then sometimes they're really complex. If you think about it, the stuff that's inside of an abscess, it's a bunch of dead white blood cells, inflammatory protein tissue, so it's not simple fluid. It's not the same density as water. So sometimes it doesn't look like black liquid at all. Sometimes it's just this nasty, thick, white pus, and you can just imagine it. I can almost smell that. I mean, look at that thing. It's nasty. And here's one again. See, it's not simple black fluid. It's a lot more echogenic than just plain old water would be uh, because of all the protein and thick material that's in there. And just a tip, uh, which this is a good example where we did it poorly. You want to increase your depth so that you can see the full borders and get a good idea of what's behind that abscess and really know how far it goes. And try to outline that one there for you. And then sometimes you might see something that's, uh, I affectionately refer to it as pusistalsis. I can't claim the uh, that I made that word up, but I like it. Where if you kind of push a little bit, you'll get this pus that's inside this abscess to swirl a little bit. And peristalsis can look a little bit like this, but uh, this is an area where we're not really worried about bowel. So that's called pusistalsis or the swirl sign. But that's another piece of evidence for pus inside of a fluid collection. And then something else to look out for is air inside of an abscess, uh, <clears throat> which might indicate a necrotizing uh, fasciitis or a necrotizing skin infection uh, from some gas-forming organism. Uh, but also remember that if there is already is a draining tract or there's been a draining tract, that some air might have gotten in from the outside, and that's another reason you might get air. But air usually is bright white with some shadows behind those little air bubbles. So that's what air is going to look like. And here's an example where we're scanning through and we see the bright white air bubbles in there and the shadows. And then there are true necrotizing infections. Again, you'll see air and there might not even be a big fluid collection. The air might be getting in the way. So again, air is bright white on ultrasound. So here's some air, some kind of dirty, dirty shadowing behind. This is all air in this tissue. And here it is even a little bit deeper. There's air here. You see some of this reverberation and shadowing artifact behind the air. So this, these are examples of necrotizing skin infections. You definitely don't want to miss this because this is definitely a surgical case. Uh, so th those are the, some of the findings that you're going to see with uh, from cellulitis to abscesses and complex abscesses on ultrasound. So let's go back to our case 
And uh, here's uh, the ultrasound on this patient. So what we see here is actually a very complex fluid collection, a lot of different layers in here. Uh, this is just showing it with a little more depth on our screen. And this is a very complex, nasty, ugly, dirty, smelly abscess that uh, had to be drained with procedural sedation. And then the patient received antibiotics and then later did well. So that's, that's what we got there. And we didn't mention it, we didn't really show it, but we also checked to make sure there was no color, no big vessels right in the path of our knife. And that's an important point. Anytime you're about to stick a knife somewhere, put color on it and make sure there's not a big blood vessel right in your path. And again, uh, this patient did well. So when you're doing ultrasound of soft tissue infections, again, this is like one of the most easy ultrasound exams you can do. Some of the pearls scan from normal all the way through abnormal until you find normal again. And that'll help you see what the borders of this problem area really look like. Look at all the borders, so look deep, increase your depth to see all the way at the most, uh, the deepest layers of whatever your problem is, your infection, and then apply color. Stick color on there. Anytime you're going to put a knife in something, make sure there's not a big blood vessel running through because sometimes some phlebitis or other things can look very similar or sometimes abscesses form, especially in drug users, right over top of vessels, so it's important to know where those vessels are. And things to look out for, pitfalls, don't miss a complex or a layered abscess just because it's not a perfect, simple fluid collection. I've done it in the past and uh, learned from my mistakes, so hopefully you can see these examples and not make the same mistakes I've made in the past. Don't miss air inside the tissue, uh, which might signal a more serious infection that needs operative treatment in the OR. And then again, I said it before, I'll say it again, apply color before you stick a knife in anything. And just a few other things you might see when you're looking for a soft tissue infection, you might see a hernia. And this is not a full hernia talk, but here we see uh, there's a little bit of peristalsis in this lesion here. So peristalsis is a good finding for a hernia that would say it's not an abscess. Don't just go stick a random knife in there. Again, here we see a little peristalsis. And here's a hernia. We can kind of see the neck of this hernia going down. And as you scan through more, you see a little defect in the tissue. So the other things to look for in a hernia which would make you decide this is not an abscess, this is a hernia, and that's going to vary our treatment somewhat. And then lymph nodes are another thing that you might see on a suspected abscess. So lymph nodes are usually kind of hypoechoic. A lot of times, especially when they're enlarged, they'll have a little bit of a hilum, and you'll see little bits of color um, within the center of the lymph node. And if you scan through them, they'll have very discrete borders and be very well defined as far as, far as their edges. And that'll help you distinguish a lymph node from a fluid collection. They also don't really have much posterior acoustic enhancement like a real fluid collection in an abscess will have. So that's another important finding to look for. And so just for fun, I want to give you one more quick case of a soft tissue infection. So this is a 17-year-old uh, man who comes in, or male, young young man. He's got buttock pain. He doesn't have any fevers, injuries, just, it just hurts right at the uh, superior gluteal cleft. No real good reason for it. And you take a look, you don't really see anything. The skin looks normal, there's no redness, there's no swelling, there's no bruising, there's nothing. Um, but you can find an area of very point tenderness right in the superior gluteal cleft. It almost has to point for you to show you where the tenderness is. So what do you do? Well, if you've got an ultrasound machine, you can ultrasound it. And here's what you find. So this is that lesion in the buttocks. You can see there's some, looks like it's black, so maybe a fluid collection, a little bit of echoes in here. And what do we see here? This is posterior acoustic enhancement. So this goes along with some kind of fluid collection. Uh, maybe an abscess. So, what are you going to do? Just give this guy antibiotics, uh, do an IND, just say, uh, you know, I don't know what that fluid collection is, there's no redness on the skin, it's probably nothing. Um, you got to figure out what you're going to do with it. Now, I will give you a hint. Check color first before you stick any knife in here or any other sharp objects. And here's what we did. So we looked at it. It's very, it's very simple. Uh, it's, you know, it's mostly black. It's pretty, very superficial. It's very well circumscribed. It's, um, you know, it's not real complex. Doesn't have a lot of layers. And we did stick color on it to make sure there was no flow in it. Sorry, I didn't show that for you. 
and uh, decided this is a good candidate for a real simple aspiration. So here's actually the needle that's in the abscess and we drain grossly pregnant fluid out of here and you can actually watch it decrease almost nothing. You can manipulate your needle a little bit to make sure you get all that pus out of there. Uh, treated this antibiotics and patient did well. Uh, didn't require further surgery or intervention. And so this is another example of how using the ultrasound we got some more detailed info and helped us make a very tailored uh, treatment decision for this patient. And again, that's, that's what ultrasound can do for you in these soft tissue infections. So you know, just to summarize, soft tissue infections, ultrasound, it's really quick, it's easy. It, and hopefully we demonstrated how useful it can be as far as making decisions and deciding what to do with your patients. You can make better diagnoses, better plans, and you never again will have to cut into something and then realize, oh, there's no pus in here. It's the worst thing in the world. And uh, with ultrasound, you'll, you won't have to do that ever again. Remember, you're going to use the high-frequency linear transducer for the most part of what we're talking about. Just some tips to remember, scan from normal to normal, seeing all the borders and the depth of all your abnormal stuff in your pathology, and again, apply color before you stick a knife into anything. And that's pretty much it. Again, if, you, if you're a beginner at ultrasound, this is something you can do tomorrow. This is easy. So I hope it's helpful. I hope you like it, and I hope to see you scanning some of this stuff soon. Thanks.